Hi guys, welcome back. Dr. Matt Barton with you once again, this time with episode 542, an interview with Dr. Michael Alexander Trulz. Yes, two doctors for the price of one video. <laughs> uh, Michael, of course, is the uh, founder of Rat Tower Software, which might be the best name for a studio I've ever heard of, uh, and a great name for his game too, Monomyth. Of course, that game name, as you'll see, is inspired by the likes of Joseph Campbell and uh, Carl Jung. Because uh, Michael's a pretty well-read individual, as you'll see. Uh, anyway, the Monomyth game, it's, it's inspired by games like Arx Fatalis and Ultima Underworld. Uh, there's a Kingsfield series that he says uh, inspired this. Uh, but to me, it kind of reminds me of uh, something like Legend of Grimrock, if you could imagine that, uh, with real-time combat and a little bit more focus on uh, caves and <laughs> a dungeon crawling exploration, uh, getting lost in the caverns. Uh, anyway, it's a really fun game. It's still in early access. It's on Steam and GOG for $19.99, but uh, it's already pretty fun. And Michael really seems like the kind of guy that's going to keep working on this thing until it's as, about as close to perfection as we can get. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, I had a lot of fun with it. Wanted to have him on, and he was gracious enough to accept. So, without further ado, here is Michael. So, how you doing, Michael? You're in Austria. I'm doing. Everything. Yes, I'm in Austria. What's what? that? <laughs> you might be the first huh? Austrian developer I've had on. I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe, but um, yeah, there, there, there aren't that many that many Austrian developers in general. I think. Yeah, I was wondering uh, what the I, thing was like there. Is it anything like Germany? Because I know they got a huge gaming scene there. They they got quite a quite a scene in in, in Germany. Yeah, um, but. In, even in Germany, it it got it got, you know, um, there are fewer. I think there are fewer games, fewer very popular games from Germany nowadays. Uh, like back in the day, you had uh, Gothic and and all kinds of uh, actually games that were popular uh, around the world. But not and crisis was also one that, that came from 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 Germany, and I think the only one from from Austria that I can think of is uh, the Anno series. So Anno fourteen oh sixteen oh three, I think this old strategy game. I think the first the first two games were from Austria, like a, a developer in Salzburg. And uh, then the I think then the series got sold off to Germany. So uh, I believe that um, that's uh, the most the most uh, that was the, probably the most popular Austrian Austrian game. But there are some some uh, small indie developers nowadays in in Austria as well. Yours truly, right? And uh, of course a couple a couple others. Uh, there was recently, I think, um, a release called Dungeons of Hinterberg, which is an Austrian game. I believe it's from from Vienna. It's an indie game. And then there was like a, a Mars Colonies uh, tower defense game. That um, yeah, right. That's this one exactly. Yeah. Dungeons of Hinterberg. Yeah, right. It's like a. a, a I think it's like a Zelda like I only played the demo. Uh, it's like a, a Zelda like uh, dungeon crawling thing. Well, maybe not a dungeon crawling thing, but more like an an an, an, an adventure game. Basically, this game could not be more different looking than yours. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah, <laughs> it's quite it's quite different. Thing. So this is a yeah. I might have to try this. So this is also Austrian. This is also an Austrian game, as as, as far as I, I remember. Yeah, it's uh, like a, a an adventure game or an an action adventure game in the Alps, I believe. So it's uh, even appropriate appropriately themed. And yeah, yeah. I don't know too much about Austria. Every time I think about it, for some reason, I think about beautiful like castles and <laughs> mountains. <laughs> yeah. Like probably yeah, I, I, well, too, there's probably some dungeons around there. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Like to... yeah. Well, hey, let's get into your game, of course. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I've been really getting into this one. Uh, you know, I booted it up a couple of days ago thinking I just play, you know, a few <laughs> minutes just kind of see if it works. And <laughs> next thing I know is like hours have gone by and I'm like stuck in the middle of a dungeon somewhere uh, trying to, I mean, my, I don't have the best sense of direction. <laughs> these things <laughs> and yeah this is i think playing your game that's what it would be like in real life if i went into a dungeon i, I get turned <laughs> around never find my way out yeah. yeah tell me about this this how this all came about because you, you did this kickstarter back i guess in mm -hmm. uh when 20, was it? 20, uh, 21 i think yeah so this was successful yeah this was uh successful back in uh 2021 uh, at the time, I had already um, worked on the game in my free time, and um, maybe let's go to to the beginning of it. I actually started working on it. I started thinking about it uh, back in two thousand fifteen already. Um, because there was uh, there was a kind of a funny situation back then. Uh, back then, or maybe it was even 2014. I'm not sure anymore. But uh, back then, I was thinking uh, for uh, Dark Souls 2 to release, oh. and I was thinking, uh, let's take a look at um, the older games of From Software, right? And one of the older games of From Software was uh, the Kingsfield series. So I played the Kingsfield series. I, I started out with the first Kingsfield game, which only released in uh, Japan originally. And I also played through uh, I played through that, and then I played the, the second one. And uh, they are, despite their, well, technical limitations, <laughs> uh, as you can see already, uh, they are rather captivating, immersive games. Hmm. Um, so you spend, uh, you know, you think you're spending like a half an hour playing, and you play it two hours. So it's very, it's very, um, it's a very interesting game, despite the, the the massive, massive technical limitations. Uh, so I was it. Taking... sounds like something I should play, right? Is it? Yeah. It's... It's definitely it's definitely worth worth a uh, worth a try if you can get over the get over the control scheme nowadays it's um Not it's a little awesome. difficult with the with the uh, controller uh but but anyway uh, so i played this and i thought uh first person dungeon crawling games uh that's pretty interesting or that's fun to play and I wonder why there aren't any more of those. So I looked into it again. And of course, I, I already knew about Ax Fatalis. At the time, I actually already had that. But I, I never really I never really got... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is <laughs> very good. Uh, I never I, I never I never finished it up to that point. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. The box was the, the box. box was pretty cool. Yeah. You got to have a box. Do you have a box? I have I have it, but I don't have it here, unfortunately. I have the um the 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 but but I have something else. Just a second. Do, do, do. Look at this box. Yeah, and I have I have yeah. this I have this picture in my in my apartment, which is uh, a little piece of artwork from uh from Ax Fatalis, I think. The guy who did this this uh, artwork was the same guy who did the artwork on the covers of uh, the Ultima games. So mm -hmm. the Ultima uh, three, I think. No, the the Ultima the Ultima five box and the Ultima six and seven box. He he also I I think he, his name was. Uh, Wait, it's on, on here. It's uh, Dennis Lubé, I think. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, but he... Uh, exactly, yeah, right, this guy. That's exactly what I picture when I think about Ultima. <laughs> Some guy yeah. like, looking like this. Wow. Yeah. He did, uh, he did also... I think he also did the um, the illustrations for, for the... Um, for the... 
manuals and and uh, there there there's quite a lot of artwork uh, by him and i think recently he did um right this is his this is his style uh i think recently he did uh, the cover art for a game called nox archeist i'm not exactly sure anymore but i i believe i believe that was that was made by him um Oh. Yeah, I had so that. now I've... Those devs have been on the show. Oh, you had him? Oh, oh the Noxa guys. Uh, Yeah. guys. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay. I think I got his. Uh... So you're talking about talking about this, right? Right, 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 right. I think it was. I'm not exactly sure whether it was his his work or whether he did artwork for it. Uh, I'm I'm not sure. I could be I could be completely wrong on that though. But I, I I thought I thought that was the, that he was somehow involved. But anyway, um, It wouldn't surprise one me, of as I know the Knox Archaeus, they're really huge fans of Ultimate. yeah, That surprised me. <laughs> yeah, but a uh, great a uh, great artist and uh, great art, and of course uh, on the Arx Fatalis. uh box i'm not sure uh i think on on the box that i have it looks a little different um i think there, there might be this this I, I don't think this artwork is on it but uh a different one Yeah, I think there might uh have been. by by him I think there's uh, right it's that uh, right i i think it's the one it's the one with the uh main character standing in this in this uh doorway I, i'm not sure anymore i think that was the artwork and i think he also did that That one, right? uh right that one exactly i think he did that i'm not sure anymore but i think he did that. maybe there's like a oh there's nothing wrong here Artwork. yeah it's, it's, it's great artwork uh but anyway so uh <laughs> now i went on a tangent about <laughs> about, about uh ax fatalis or the art but um uh, so i i i when i when i finished kingsfield or when i when i played kingsfield uh i revisited uh ax fatalis and i played through that of course and uh then i thought well what else could i play that's like this and of course i got to play uh ultima underworld That's nice. uh one and two um What'd you think of those? and i i think it's great but i'm i'm uh biased because i already uh like the ultima series <laughs> uh but no it, it was it was great um you have to get over the controls of course uh the context sensitive uh, mouse controls are missing from that uh which was later then introduced i think in system shock which makes it much much easier to play uh even today uh and i've played through system system shock quite a few times exactly <laughs> right I then just this is even this. I just happen to have this over sitting by me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Huge. yeah so uh, uh yeah the i i i'm 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 quite a fan of 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 the ultimate games and ultimate underworld games then as well uh and when i played those games i realized um so i was playing them in 2015 and i realized the newest game of that kind was basically 15 years old Or 14 years old. I think uh, Ax Fatalis came out in, in 2001. So I thought, why, why is that the case? Uh, I wondered why is that the case? And since I, um, since I uh, had basically always wanted to, to program a little project on the side, I, I started out um, trying blender and 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 doing some 3d modeling and then i i basically started with a very 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 basic version of monomyth that was still more inspired by a kingsfield at the time than arx fatalis because i i in my in my imagination i thought uh kingsfield that's much you know simpler game basically so um 
let's let's make something like that to keep the keep it uh simple to keep it uh, manageable um but it grew and grew and grew as a project <laughs> and then uh basically it grew into this project that it is today um after after quite a bit of Well, time basically were you already doing that kind of work? Are you a computer programmer or anything like that? Or is this just yeah like, how much, how much stuff did you have to learn? Um, mostly, mostly the three D modeling part. Uh, I have I haven't done anything in that in that regard. But I was at the time uh, studying uh, computer science in in Austria here, and uh, so from the programming, actually, that was also one of the reasons why I, I actually download, downloaded Unity back then in the day to. Um, have something to play around uh to program and um so i don't forget how to program because i've been doing a lot of other stuff at the time uh and yeah so so most the most training so to say uh went into 3d modeling and i'm i can produce serviceable 3d models nowadays which um all go into uh my work and uh i think for for a solo developer it's it's fine it could be a lot better of course but uh it's it's all right You're a little bit modest, I think. It's serviceable. It looks it's good. it's okay I mean, I, thank I even you little, I like these little things you put together for this too. But that's yeah, a very. I could just sit there and stare at that, you know. <laughs> yeah, no ends. So you did all these models and things. I did I did all the all the three D assets, all the three D models. A lot of people even probably use the uh, store to buy those. assets Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean to um to a to a certain extent I can of course understand it. Uh but um once you have uh some specific aesthetic in mind basically that um it, it works for prototyping let's say it like that yeah but uh once once you have a specific aesthetic in mind you will probably have to uh create your own models or or hire somebody to to make them of Yeah, course that's the problem I was running into with my. I had a little project I was just kicking around for fun, you know. And I, what I found, I could get on the asset store, and they would have these uh, deals. Mm -hmm. You yeah find like a castle set or something, dungeon set. And Those you, are actually you know, very it's good, like yeah. it's not like only ten dollars. It's amazing. But then you Yeah. realize, okay, I got this, but it doesn't match this other thing. It doesn't I got. match that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, unless you just want something that looks completely random. <laughs> right, right, right. This is this is uh I mean this is a big problem for 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 a lot of of, of developers. Um when they when they uh go and 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 get uh everything or a lot of stuff from the assets so that the that the assets don't mesh right that they are in different um they have like different texture resolution if they are for example uh, used normally for uh, like a top down view and then there's, there are some people who who use those assets in in first person and and it's stuff like that so you have to you have to be careful with with uh the assets but it's a, it's a legitimate um uh a pretty good way to to prototype anyway uh and uh also to produce some good stuff i mean this looks this looks quite fine to me <laughs> it's no no problem here you're looking at something like this and it's like wow that looks you know triple a it's only 21 dollars you know ah! and then you get all this all then you find out well okay but maybe i want uh a done uh maybe a different kind of treasure chest or a trap or something like Yeah, yeah. swinging blades or something and like good luck finding something that's going to match this Yeah, right, 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 exactly. I, that was my recurring problem, but but yeah, I see what you're saying there. So, like somebody could use this, to make a good demo, 
or prototype. And then you could take that mm -hmm. to Kickstarter and say, you know, exactly. Plays well, we can find somebody to do the uh, custom stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah, makes yeah, sense. Yeah. I didn't mean to cut you off. But there's, <laughs> but but there's, I, I mean, there's, I'm there's. Also... I'm, I'm super impressed that you downloaded Blender and figured out how to use that thing. Because I... my <laughs> God, and what you made some stuff with it. Thank you. I love that thing. <laughs> um, two years of quite hard. a. <laughs> Quite a few years, yeah. Some, some, some time. I, I remember in the beginning when I was making, um, when I was making any model, basically, I had to redo it again and again and again. And I remember like seven times for for uh, a, a regular boat or something. I made like a little a little boat with you know this 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 weird shape in the front. Like this, 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 uh, um, and and that's not so easy to model. Actually, <laughs> that's quite difficult. <laughs> so, so it took me seven times to make something like that. Uh, but if you're, you know, if you're persistent with it, then then that, that I learned should one. work. Out. And I got on YouTube. <laughs> I was looking for tutorial videos for Blender. You know, how do you? Yeah. And I found one that, and the guy was like, we're going to be making this donut. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thought, okay, uh, okay. That sounds pretty Andrew simple. Price, I think, yeah. I think I can make a donut, you know? <laughs> like, this is a 15-part series. <laughs> yeah. Damn donut. Oh, my God. Forget about how am I ever yeah. going <laughs> to make any game if it takes 15 videos to make a donut, you know? I, I think I think the the video that you're referring to is uh, like the, the tutorial by by I think his name was Andrew Price, and he is like um, more or less uh, one of the the uh, yeah that's big, uh, yeah right the big yeah, YouTube but... Blender tutors and I, I think the the thing with that that Part donut one. tutorial Part. exactly uh, donut. <laughs> Yeah. I think I think he goes through all the all the functionality of of uh Blender. So you wouldn't even need all the all the uh tutorials. I, I also personally I, I never went through the I never went through the, the, the donut tutorial myself. <laughs> even though I, I always I always think um maybe you know it's it's always good to to return to uh professional uh beginners tutorials. Because you can um, fix some problems or some some bad habits that you adopted along the way, but to this day I have never <laughs> I've never watched the, the Donald tutorial. Unfortunately, I think it definitely saved you a lot of time. Probably, yeah. yeah. You know, a lot of times I would get excited. I'd watch a video, get excited, and go do something, and then I'd watch the next part of it and realize I could have done that a whole lot easier. <laughs> yeah. that really would behoove somebody to sit down and like watch a whole series but it's hard i mean because you want to get in and create yeah. something it's like i don't want to right, right. <laughs> <laughs> all right so yeah you did all this you made your demo mm -hmm. yeah right uh i you didn't track this kickstarter when you were doing it mm -hmm. is that a pretty smooth thing that you get funded right away i think it was like four days you were funded right uh three or four days i'm, I'm not sure anymore but uh it was it was done pretty quickly um basically uh i had i had the project on on, on social media already and uh some some people knew about it uh, who would then retweet it uh on, on x oh, uh and uh then it Actually, it 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 was funded pretty pretty quickly, actually, and uh, it's also I think it's also thanks to the demo, of course, uh, because I think that is that is probably more or less mandatory if you want the smooth Kickstarter campaign to to have a demo and not only have a demo but have it on top of your Kickstarter page so everybody sees right away. Here's a demo. Here's something that already works, and you know, then then makes sense to to uh, to pledge 
Oh, absolutely. He, he just have to have a demo. I mean, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You never know. Then I have somebody uh, on here. They'll be saying, "Why don't you talk about my thing?" And I'm like, but there's no demo. <laughs> you know? yeah. You're asking somebody to pony up, you know, fifty, maybe fifty, sixty bucks, maybe for this, and you really yeah. want to have something they can look at and say, "Well, at least I know if they can make this demo, I'm sure mm -hmm. they can, all they have to do is just expand this." Expand, expand this yeah. or or as it was in my case, refactor the whole thing and <laughs> make it a new, <laughs> make it a new. Um, the the code base for 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 Monomyth is is uh, entirely different nowadays um, compared to the demo back in the day. I didn't expect that. I didn't actually want to refactor it, uh, at least not to that extent, but. Uh, you know, for for future projects, I hope it will pay off to to remake this whole uh, this whole code base into something that can be used in different scenarios, not only for 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 this game, uh, and also of course for a new demo for another project maybe. So. <laughs> Well, this one's, I think it's an early access, <clears throat> still an early access, right? That is still an early access, yes. Uh, and it will be an early access for for quite some time. So talk I, I'm 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 talking of the far future <laughs> when I'm when well, I'm talking about do, uh, what do you got left to do on this? Um actually uh, it's it's uh why is great to still quite, it's it's still uh quite a bit of work actually. Um I'm I'm currently reworking the second area, so currently you only have the the first area, the demo area, a hub, so the city basically, and a couple smaller dungeons in the game, and um, in the in the backup beta that I did before early access, uh, I already had the uh, second area, the third area. And what was missing then was still the, the the last chapter of the game, so the last area basically. So essentially, uh, currently the game is missing three areas, out of which two uh, have already been uh, created, designed and created, uh, and one is an, in the design stage more or less. Uh, so I'm currently doing the doing the 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 second area. I'm restructuring it for performance reasons, uh, and to integrate it later this year. Hopefully, I I hope I can do that later this year. Um, but basically, what's still to do is uh, are those three areas plus, of course, uh, polishing performance getting it uh, to run properly on Steam Deck with a controller. And uh, uh, then there's also backer content that still needs to go in. Uh, so there's still quite a little bit of, uh, there's a little bit of work still. <laughs> yeah, let's go to, let me get it running here. I was hoping you could give me some tips on it. Oh yeah. Yeah, I love this title screen. <laughs> oh, yeah. So badass. Uh... <laughs> yeah, look at all these changes. Yeah, you've been... Yeah. Wrong. Recently, yeah. Uh, quite a few. Uh, they, they go back quite until, you know, the the, the the open backup beta, I think. Yeah, version B4, seriously. It's like the, the fourth stage of the backup beta uh, patch fourth uh, 3c or something uh and now it's the the early access version of 101a right yeah and i just uh, basically added uh custom portraits which um some people were ha very happy to see <laughs> so they can can add their own yeah, I need uh, images <laughs> i need my custom character yeah let's see yeah, so here's. Oh, yeah. The... I'm like, yeah, you yeah, look how smooth this. Oh, so I say something. Yeah, that feels good. 
then I got my character here. Right. So I was trying to do like a, a warrior. Mm hmm. So strength 13, yeah, vitality, endurance, yeah. Swords and axes, athletics one is always, I, I always, for testing, I always uh, put all the points into athletics because I can get through the area fast <laughs> then. Uh, all right, for faster running, higher jumping. Uh, anatomy is for uh, critical hits, basically, and for um, determining how much health an enemy has, but that only works at a certain level of that. Uh, yeah, right, right. And of course, uh, it's also about uh, the effectiveness of, of bandages. So if you use a bandage with a high anatomy skill, you get more uh health back and uh yeah otherwise that looks quite looks like a warrior yeah <laughs> yes yes how do i cut this volume down oh uh, no that's always oh maybe it's... something's not working there oh uh, yeah yeah that <laughs> it could be as as uh and i can do my i've been yeah, this looks like a little. Maybe there's a little glitch. I yeah. can't hear it at all. Yeah, I'm gonna turn it down on my mixer because I want. Okay. I get it. Okay, there we go. It's better. <laughs> okay. Hey. So, yeah, let me. Yeah, so we got the anatomy. Right. So realize, for some reason, I forgot that this has critical hit. So I need to right. I th some. Yeah. Um, <laughs> lock picking. I kept finding lock. these chests that were locked, and <laughs> it's just oh. It's yeah. Currently, it's 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 very much um, focused on on like pure builds. The the game is balanced uh, uh, by pure builds and and like um, uh, mixed. Mixed builds, uh, like a battle mage or a, a, a stealth warrior. I still have to balance the game a little bit around that. So, uh, but but with four lo uh, four points in lock picking, you should be able to open some doors. And something I'm not sure whether it is in the description of it yet. Uh, if you push dexterity up, uh, it will give you a bonus on lock picking. Uh, yeah, right. It's in the uh, right. It's in the, the, the dexterity, um, in the dexterity description. Uh, but that that starts working out. I think at ten you get like one point, one bonus point, and then the next at seventeen or eighteen. I'm not I'm not uh, sure right now. Uh, intelligence, of course, for for uh, magic, vitality, and endurance. Vitality does what it. Well, what you would think it does, uh, it, it uh, determines the health, endurance, uh, and determines the stamina and cognition. Cognition actually determines the the focus, which is like stamina for magic. Um, oh, that's what that is. I didn't. I've just kind of been tinkering around with the magic. Yeah. So I would need cognition and intelligence, but for my right. guy, I'd probably want endurance and strength. Maybe yeah, some... and some dexterity depending on the on the weapon that you use, and with the with right uh, with the with the weaponry skills, uh, they are currently uh, basically pushing the uh, the damage on the respective uh, weapon type, and uh, there's also a requirement on some weapons for certain skills or for for like um if you if you i don't know maybe you have a weapon uh, you have like a, an axe on you so if you go to the description window right on the left you can see this requires like a, a skill of um five because it says like skill points, you got eleven skill points in swords and axes, 
and it only requires five, so you're getting a bonus, basically. And the same is true for strength and dexterity. That's what that is. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, that's like um, this is like this this uh, three type damage system. Basically, you have slashing damage, bludgeoning damage, and piercing damage, and um, those three numbers next to the skill points and strength and so on. Uh, that's uh, the bonus or the malus. Uh, because the quality of that that X is worn at the moment, you have uh, like a, a malus of minus four three three, and if you sum it up, you should get, right. If you sum all uh, all numbers up, you should get the bonuses from below. So minus four plus three plus one is zero. So we have zero bonus on slashing damage that needs to be communicated a little better i think but yeah yeah i thought that yeah. for some reason i was thinking it would show me a little icon down here if the weapon was damaged oh yeah uh, i it, it, it does light. but uh but it doesn't at that level yet uh so oh, yes, once it not... gets ruined uh i guess to to like a lower quality level it will uh, show up down there yeah my stuff is in bad shape <laughs> you can you can repair some of the some of your stuff not everything uh you can't repair leather clothing at the moment you can you can do it in the uh in the city uh there you can repair your entire equipment but on your own you can repair your metal equipment at a forge so when you find a forge you can go in there and swing the hammer and repair your gear basically yeah i'm not sure if i'm close to where the yeah <laughs> forge is I, I did use it before to repair it yeah there's there should be um I, I think there's I might... one Oh, there's actually one. <laughs> okay, so right. that's the axe. Right. And then cook it a while. Cook it a while, right. And in the meantime, you can like uh, equip your, your hammer. This is something that still needs to, to be... Uh, and you need to take it and, and put it on the on the anvil. And you can you can basically take it right like that. Uh, you can also um, you can also rotate items in your in your inventory with R. So if you press right, exactly. Oh, oh, that's neat. So if you take it now and you can rotate it or do it like that, yeah, right. Okay, now I can hit it. Right. Yeah, uh, you have to. You have to actually swing the hammer at it <laughs> right and there's this little there's this little um this little effect uh right as long as this little this little ring effect this this uh little i'm not sure how to call it um as long as that shows up that means that uh, that the uh, equipment is actually being repaired oh okay might as well do the buckler. Yeah. Yeah, this is a neat system. And the cooking is similar to this. It's basically similar. I try to I try to uh, keep most of the interactions in the game world really and do as little as possible. You you drop the fish. Um and then do as little as possible in menus. Because I personally, I, I personally am not a big fan of, um, you know, menu-based crafting. I don't, uh, I don't care too much for it. So I try to have the player do everything in the game world directly. Oh, I don't think I've been down there yet. I was trying to fish. Uh, I never could catch anything. <laughs> Yet, just be real patient with it. Um, there's no, there's at least no skill or attribute um, limitation, but you have to wait a bit. 
Hey, I thought I saw it. I saw one of these. I'm guessing I just need to keep looking around till I find the clue. Exactly, yeah. So I'll show you where I'm getting stuck. Hmm? There's a I think I'm in the right yeah, these guys. <laughs> yeah. My God, I, I can't. They're really killing. Have you have you tried kicking them? No. Right. No, this just... this one. I mean, this guy. I'm not sorry. Yeah. Oh no, but that if you would kick them. Oh, he's an easy guy. Now, it was like that farm I was at. It was like three. Uh, oh. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. What right, am I right. doing wrong? Because they. Oh. Uh, right now, um, when you when you uh swing your axe. You use a certain amount of stamina, and when that stamina is low, uh, which it is when you once you oh he actually caught up to you, <laughs> he heals himself too. <laughs> okay, uh, when your stamina is low, your damage is low as well. So uh, that one, but you might be yeah exactly very good and now he's kicking you yeah. I need to like block. Right, 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 right. So uh, your your stamina should always be. Um, oh, you son you of can, a! You, you, you can you can cancel that by kicking him. Oh, that's what I kick. Okay. Okay. Oh, the kick is really effective, isn't it? Yeah, but it needs a lot of. Uh, it requires a lot of of stamina. That's the that's the um, that's the balance that you have to find basically. So I can eat. What's that little right. thing in the top left corner? Oh, that's still a place <laughs> placeholder for for uh, status effects. Uh, that should be like a little a little. Meat symbol, a little uh, meal symbol, and uh, once uh, once that is done, uh, that that uh, should also be cancelable, of course. Right, right, right. That's your uh, that's your experience. Every time your character dies, uh, you leave this little bit of experience lying around. And you have to basically get back. I uh, go back and get it. How do I get back to that farm? Uh, if you turn around and to the left, out to the left, right there, and straight ahead. Um, do you have the map? Right, exactly. It's the thing on the right. This this little complex there, over here. Right, this one exactly. I need to eat a little more because I just ran past these guys because they were just the worst. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're um, they're like a a bunch of bandits that occupied this estate and uh, drove the original farmer. That, yeah. that actually owned the state estate they drove him out uh and you can find him in the nearby chapel where yeah, he I tells got, you about this i got about the quest. This problem right I right uh i'm sure oh, ah, yeah they occupy the state yeah that's it right exactly okay so and you you can you can drive them out any way you like either you um you how do, uh, how do I use this fire berry? Uh, either right click it or, but you're gonna do that right away. <laughs> yeah, he's huh? not he's not too impressed by that apparently right now. This is something. <laughs> okay. Oh crap! All right. Yeah, right. they are. They are currently. They are currently. Um, yeah. So if you attack them, they're going to be very angry with you. If you 
just uh, trespass, they're going to be somewhat angry with you, but they are not going to follow you. In this case, however, since you attack them, they're going to follow you. <laughs> oh, yeah, I could not get yeah. these. I, I tried like 50 times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but there's a... There, maybe there, there's a way. To fight them. <laughs> yeah, maybe. there's a... I mean, you, you can fight them. You can... Um, uh, but you can also uh, get them out of there uh, by just, um, I, I think, trading with them or not, not trading, but you uh, you talk to them. To talk, you you uh, uh, have to go to the leader, but for that you have to pay in order to get into the estate, and you are exactly at the at the wrong entrance of the estate uh right if you if you if you jump down there there's this guy right i can talk to him you should be able to talk to him unless you have attacked him before but you haven't hey friend right quite in a hurry <laughs> yeah this is pretty good dialogue too <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm. I'm. Um, I'm usually writing. I, I like writing bandits. I like. I like writing characters that constantly threaten the player. I can fill your mouth with my fist, scoundrel. <laughs> What's he want? Five silver pieces. Okay, so you just pay him, and then I can walk around. You you pay him, and you can walk around, and now they are no longer attacking you. Oh, that's. So... Okay, I was wondering what I was doing because I just could not. They were killing me. I had no. Yeah. I was trying to like sneaky sneak around with a bow and run. Yeah, I mean away. you can't do that too. <laughs> you can't do that too. But uh, once they find you, they'll be not too happy with you. Yeah, nothing was working. You know, as long as I got this, I think we should show the the magic system too because that was pretty fun. Yeah. Let me see if I can get back to this. Right. For my right. so what I'm thinking is you you have to get your intelligence and those various magic skills up, and then more of this will fill mm -hmm. out. You can uh, the the you you find the, the these little orbs are like the basically like the runes in in Ultima Underworld. You find them around the world. Uh, they're called Echo Stones, right? And uh, the more you have of them. Uh, the more combinations you can basically oh, construct that's... from them, uh, and and uh, the more the more spells you can find and cast, of course. And uh, currently, you could technically cast. I think. Uh, I think that's magic arrow, but that right that requires much much more intelligence, like seventeen. But I think with with ten, you might be able to cast arcane dart, unless it requires eleven. But I'm not sure. No, it might actually it might actually require thirteen. As I said, the uh, the game is currently right. Yeah, this 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 I think is the arcane dart spell. Uh, that's currently too complicated, uh, but as I said, the um, the the game is currently balanced for relatively pure builds. Mm. But once you have the spells, you can then equip your your tome basically and cast the spells with that. So like um, in a in a like in an FPS almost. So if you if you switch over with R, right uh, on the left you have the selection. This is um, that is ignite, and the empty one is uh, douse. So if you go here, right, exactly. So you can douse the the, the torch, and you can right, you can uh, ignite it again. <laughs> it doesn't work on that. <laughs> How do I cancel? Oh. Lost all my focus. Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. So this that's kind of like the same thing as the stamina. Right. But for right, magic right, spells. Right. Yeah, that for makes magic sense. spells, yeah. 
That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I forgot what I'm supposed to do with these guys. Yeah, right. Um, you you can talk to their leader. It should be behind you. This one doesn't want to talk to you. <laughs> right, this one. Yeah, right. This is this is the the bandit leader Harold. He and his men have uh, occupied the estate. They have driven out Lloyd, the uh, farmer who originally owned the farm. And uh, he is now basically acting as if he is owning the place. Uh, so he, he uh, can be fought. Like you can threaten him, you can fight him immediately, but it's not recommendable, of course. So you have to strike a deal with him or can strike a deal with him if you, if you like. Uh, and if you have a little bit of speech here, Right, you can even you can even. Uh, oh, I don't have enough money. Basically, right. Uh, it's it's still it's, it's still a little too expensive the whole thing. So you can do an alternative quest, which um, is about one of their men uh, who took off with uh, some loot from a, a, a previous raid. And if you can find that guy, and I don't want to say bring him to justice, but uh, <laughs> but uh, kill him, right? Then they they will be satisfied and leave the estate as well. But you can also just uh, you know um, pay him and 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 buy the estate back, basically. Well, this is more fun. I like the quest. <laughs> Very Conan like, you know. <laughs> so yeah, right, like a, and, and, you know what I really like too is all the little secret stuff. Yeah, you can just <laughs> the thing, like secrets everywhere in this. I was jumping up. I, you know, you'd find stuff on top of a shelf, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the one one thing that that you you should um, I don't know look out for in in here uh, is. Uh, the 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 bandit at the beginning told you, so we didn't read that now. But the bandit in the beginning told you to stay out of the houses because they they are basically saying this is still our property, so don't go in there. Uh -huh. So if if it is if it is this one didn't see you now, but um, if oh, everything so is yeah. <laughs> If everything is 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 working as intended, if you go into some of the 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 buildings, they will still attack you. It's just as a just as a warning. Right, you can take some arrows. You can also take the bow, but I think you have one. That one might be better though. So I, th I think it's the same one, but if if the if the if the Long one bow. is oh no, it's excellent. Uh, the the quality is still fine. So uh, this one is, is just yeah, I got something okay called leave it. glowing charcoal. Right, uh, glowing charcoal is for orientation, more or less. You can put it on one of your quick slots. And then you look at uh, at a wall or any any surface, and right, and you can draw a little X. Exactly, so oh. you know you have been you have been here already. Oh, that's clever! What? <laughs> <laughs> I so could use that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I was like dropping little items. And this, this might. What do I do with this empty flask? Can I put? Can I make a potion somehow? Uh, you can fill the flask uh, at uh, at the fountain. You can either fill it with um, a mana potion, a health potion, or just regular water. I think there's a fountain to the left, but it's just regular water. It's this somewhere, one? somewhere, yeah, somewhere down there. It's uh, yeah, I think, yeah, right. There's like this well. 
Okay, so I just put the exactly. plastic. I think that that right exactly, and now you have a water flask, um, and and water is is basically just a little refreshment, so your stamina uh, regenerates faster, and also your focus regenerates faster. So it's actually quite useful. Okay, that's good to know. I thought it might be something with these uh, herbs. Like put the herbs in there, mix it up. Right, right. I've been I've been thinking about this. Um, uh, maybe maybe sometime during early access, I'll, I'll I'll take a look at whether or not there will be alchemy or some form of alchemy. Uh, but right now, it's not in the game. That's how feature creep happens, you know. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Alchemy. I've, I've, I've I want I wanted to do uh, some some alchemy system already, uh, but I have uh, I have uh, resisted it basically. <laughs> I've resisted introducing it. And I'm looking for a I'll fire probably... fireplace. Um, I haven't been in there, or you yeah, haven't been in there. Uh, where's the? I was going to show the cooking. Right. Uh, the nearest, nearest fireplace is um the 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 original no not the original uh, the the first the first trader you meet if you turn around uh there's like a little lever to the right to the right is uh to open the the um the the, the gate at this little bridge right yeah on the left oh right. yeah exactly so oh, that opens this gift you'd see that <laughs> uh. and when you go through yeah, right when you go through here and take the next to the right and there to the left that should be the there's a fireplace right this one wow exactly. You know this game really well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've, oh, I like I've... this. Oh, wait. Did I... Oh, there we go. So that's all you got to do. Just put it next to the fire. Boom. Just put it next to the fire. Right. Uh, and you can also, uh, by the way, if you um, have... Not very sanitary, Michael. Just putting it on the floor. Not very. <laughs> not very, yeah. But you can, you can by the way, uh, also rotate items with the mouse wheel. Like uh, when you when you point it at right, exactly oh, like that. Okay. So you can uh, place it uh, exactly where you want it. So I think I've got that. I don't think we cooked the mushrooms, right? Do you That's cook a possibility as well. Yes. Oh, you can cook them. So you I can cook them. I'll get it out. Uh, just click once. Oh, oh yeah. there we go. So this cooks. Oh, uh, this cooks, yeah. I didn't know you could cook the mushrooms. So yeah, what is they it? they get a little they they get a little uh more you get a you get back a little more mana. Those you can't cook. <laughs> so you can still cook uh, bread or dough, actually. And there is, I mean, there is a kitchen in in this area, with 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 some some things in it kitchen. that you can cook. Yeah. All right, let's go. Uh, but it, but it's but it's uh it's back at the um it's back at the barracks basically the one uh, the the place where those two uh, wastelanders fought you. Oh, uh, this got me a lot of times. There's like <laughs> a pressure plate around here somewhere. Yeah, actually. <laughs> Activates this thing. No, I guess it's not doing it now. All right. I kept dying there. <laughs> yeah, this is really fun, just exploring all this. And I like the little puzzles. Oh, yeah, there's these guys. So I can't. 
with these, there's some way to light this, right? Right, yeah. Do I you use can either... magic or I was, I was trying to do it with a torch? Uh, you can either do it with the torch or with uh, the ignite spell or by just placing it on a fireplace, I believe. So if you just uh, throw it into the fire, it will ignite as well. Um, but you have to get closer and uh, right exactly and press X. What am I and not? If you if you um, if you duck, if you crouch, should work. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that solves that. Yeah, I was trying to figure out how to do it. Okay. Oh, there's some more arrows. Now, I've been here like a hundred times. I just now noticed those arrows. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's a chest up there. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Right. That's locked. Oh, no. Don't you wanna... you have... have any oh, more? you don't have any lock, lock picks. Can I just break it open? Uh, no, you at the, not at the moment. Uh, but you can buy lockpicks from the adventurer in the other room if you have something to trade in. Yeah, with my luck, it'll just be empty. <laughs> oh, I think there is some, some, something in there, but uh, I, I believe it's like a, a mace if I'm not entirely, um, if I'm not entirely mistaken. Oh, I don't even remember how to get back there. <laughs> See what I mean? I get lost very easily. <laughs> yeah, the, if you if you if you open the map, right? I think you you can you can move while while um, using the map exactly. So at least it, it should help you a, a bit. I hope. Okay. Uh, so you can. Uh, that's a little tricky, but yeah, it's tricky. <laughs> it's tricky. That's right, true. I yeah. I can close this part down. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's helpful. Maybe, uh, what the heck is maybe something? I thought I saw something moving over there. Oh, now I'm seeing things. <laughs> I thought I saw a rat crawling around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so this is uh, just a lot of fun. I've been having a great time. I'm glad. I'm trying to think of this something else we should talk about here. Is there something you wanted to show? Um. Well, we could fish. Uh, you you could fish. Yeah. Is that um? It's like uh that potion that you have that yellow potion, is yeah. I think uh um. Right, that's a that's an underwater. I think it's an, an, an Azron's oil. Yeah, right. That's to to breathe underwater. Uh, it's not really necessary in this area, though. But I, I think I think you could could fish maybe. Yeah, if I can that's... my way. I think the water's down here. Right. Yeah. Okay. I could, I could, uh, I mean, I don't want to spoil anything, but there are like, um, oh, there's something specific, over. yeah, right. There are like specific fishing spots where you can find, uh, special items as well. Okay. So I don't need to put any bait on the fishing pole. Nothing, no. Okay. Wait, not the buckler. Oh. Where did my buckler go? Uh, if you press X, I uh, know not X, uh, V, I think. Right. Uh, if you hold V, 
you can uh, the, the collision is a little off there uh if you hold v you are in search mode and you basically see all items highlighted next to you yeah i did not know that That's cool. oh okay. you also dropped your 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 x in there what? yeah <laughs> uh okay Yeah, the, the the collision on that on that model is still a little off. Not my axe. And, uh, to you a little forward to to where you were standing. I think it's I think it's like I think you're standing right on it. A little bit to the right. <laughs> somewhere here. I think it was somewhere here. I'm sorry, this is like uh a... I'll just reload. <laughs> I didn't realize I dropped my axe. Yeah, it's uh it only says the you the, the buckler. Water, maybe, you the water. <laughs> maybe you got in the water and I think no no, I think I think it's this uh it's like a problem with that with that one with that one mesh you are standing on, with that one model you're standing on. uh it it uh has its collision a little too low so if you drop things on it uh it's basically they're sinking into the into the ground a bit but you you can you can get them you just have to basically pixel hunt on that spot that's a little that's one thing that i i should <laughs> that i should fix soon okay. ideally we probably don't want to highlight that in the video <laughs> Okay, well, I can just reload it, but I want to fish. All right, so I just drop it in like this, right? Mm. Exactly, yeah. And then you know. wait for the uh, for the oh! little thing. Exactly. You've got yeah. Okay, you need to expand this inventory. There's, there's like another um, bar. I need like another bar. Yeah, there is actually um, there is uh, a way to expand your inventory. Oh, there, uh, there is? are yeah there are uh there's a backpack and once you have it uh, you get basically uh another inventory a whole lot oh, of inventory oh do i need that backpack okay. it's also in the barracks we won't spoil it for anybody oh, okay yeah <laughs> <This one. laughs> okay <laughs> all right <laughs> but but then again you can also buy it if you if you if you uh if you want to uh you it uh, maybe one thing that's um really with the fishing important. i could get enough fish to buy whatever i want if i'm patient enough right because you could just sell the fish actually uh, actually yeah actually yes this is actually one of the um one of the tricks that some some people came up with there is like a a create food spell and uh some people just spent some time next to a, a, a fountain of mana and they just created more and more food and they just sold that stuff <laughs> and made a lot of money with that uh so that's like a little exploit basically <laughs> but the kind of thing buggy when you figure people figured that out and... <laughs> yeah <laughs> are you like are you gonna patch it so they can't do it Yeah, I, I'm. I mean, I'm. You know, I'm not even. I'm not even. Uh, these are just little things that that uh, when they are possible, they are possible. And uh, I think little little glitches, not glitches, but little exploits like that. If they're not too obvious, they are. They are also fun fun to yeah, play around with. I think so. I mean, people love finding little things like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is the reason why why so many people still love Morrowind. Uh, you can do a lot of stuff like that in Morrowind as well. Yeah, what was the game with the Dino you know, Daggerfall? I had plenty of things like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, I think in Daggerfall you could uh, like um, what was it? Take take out the loan and then just take off and then never pay it back <laughs> or something like that. Oh, nah. <laughs> We don't want to get political here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you have time for a couple of quick questions here that some people have sent sure, in? Sure. 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 I think these are from Matt. Yeah, all these are from Matt. 
so what's the significance of calling the game monomyth? Um, so well, Campbell or Jung had that. Yeah, this is uh, Campbell, uh, and and there is a reason in in the story for it, okay. and that I cannot go into yet. The title of the game is a spoiler. Oh uh, well. Okay. I mean, I mean, generally, um, generally, it's it's uh, of course everything is revol revolving around uh, this this hero's journey that mm -hmm. you're on, um, and uh, certain elements that uh, Campbell, of course, also uh, pointed out are present, of course, also present in in the game, uh, but generally speaking. Uh, it's also just a nice name for a fantasy game, I think. That's yeah. that's another reason, of course. Love but, the... uh... Mono myth. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's like a metal band. <laughs> I'm actually, I, I think, isn't there one? I think there is even one. I'm not, I'm not sure. I think there is even a metal band that's called Mono myth. I'm not sure anymore. Uh, let's see. I was looking for... Yeah, Joseph Campbell, the hero with a thousand faces. That's a great book, by the way. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it looks like there's a band. There, there's a band, I think, yeah. They'll be hearing from their <laughs> I'm only... <laughs> yeah, I'm not. But but I've 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 seen those uh, as well, yeah. Well, they're from the Netherlands. They're cool there, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I definitely. want to put one of their songs. <laughs> okay let's see we talked about that yeah this is a good question what's the best feedback you you've gotten from the game being an early access oh uh, that's that's actually been quite a lot of of, of good feedback i mean um I'm, I'm constantly working in a lot of a lot of stuff uh and and as I said recently, I, I uh, worked in uh, custom portraits, which were uh, a requested feature. I mean, all the all the requested features are basically good feedback because it's what people want, and uh, so as a result, I'm just uh, implementing that stuff. So, uh, but but concerning concerning uh, general technical feedback. Uh, that's a good question. Actually, there were some some bal some balancing issues in the beginning, especially uh, with regard to to magic, and some of the enemy uh, attacks were too aggressive at the beginning. So I I, I fixed that, and I think that um, saved a lot of people a lot of frustration. Uh, and so, so that is probably, that was probably some very good advice because I personally, I, I, uh, you know, I know the, the game obviously, and, uh, I have a hard time balancing it, right. Uh, but when, when someone else looks at it, uh, they have a much better, much better perception of what might be frustrating to, to people. Than I have because I'm 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 more or less resistant to it at this point. But yeah, Very so so some 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 of the, the some of the balancing feedback was definitely very helpful, especially in the in the beginning, uh, and also some feedback uh, in the earlier versions. Uh, so even before before early access in the demo versions. Um, there was some feedback concerning controls, like the mouse controls, they were completely off and uh, they felt like uh, accelerated, but uh, it didn't work right. And, and this is like stuff that, that through development, I, I, I simply, you know, I simply didn't notice anymore because on, on the one hand, I think, yeah, maybe it's something with my system. Maybe well, it's I noticed just, it just, too with this because when I was playing it just then, mm -hmm. I had it in the window, windowed uh, mm -hmm. version or whatever you call it, the yeah. resolution, and it was fine. I mean, the mouse feels great. But when I played mm -hmm. it full screen, 
just like every, I had yeah. to like every, you know I had yeah. to be super careful with the mouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so mouse sensitivity controls, um, all good. all this stuff, all this stuff is 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 very very valuable feedback actually, because it's it's stuff that I personally, uh, I am I'm just accustomed to a lot of 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 the little quirks that uh, have somehow sprung up during development, and I just never noticed them. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, my experience. Every time I'd fix one thing, I'd break something else. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's 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 also happening. Yeah. Well, I mean, I would give you. You've already done the the thing that I would have had to give feedback on, which is I'm a big fan of rats. <laughs> you know, I I really get disappointed when I play a game and there's no rats to fight. Not a problem with Mono Myth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I wish we had. I should have saved it right before one of those rat battles. You know that that, that reminds me. Of, I was going to ask why you call your your studio Rat Tower. Um, when I when I um, when I was looking for like a, a little uh, for for a studio name at the time, I, I couldn't come up with anything. So I looked uh, into uh folklore and and um legends and tales and whatnot and there is a a tower in i think i wanted to look this up again but uh i i forgot right now but there's a tower in germany or it's either in germany or or in, in western poland i'm not sure anymore which is called Right, uh, the Red Tower, exactly, which is like a, a tower where I believe um, a bishop took, right, uh, he, he he went there and basically he got eaten by rats. And I thought that story was... <laughs> I've never uh, heard that story. That, that story was uh, so intriguing that I, I basically took over the name from that. <laughs> That's the best name ever. <laughs> Thank you. Bishop Haddo? Bishop, huh. Yeah, right. This was like, I'm not exactly sure anymore where it was. Uh, but if it is uh, in the, oh, no, so it's actually in, at the Rhine. So it's in, 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 in Western Germany, actually. It's so like a little a... tower on, on, on a little island uh, in the Rhine. I remember that it was in a river, but I didn't, I didn't remember that. Right. Mouse tower, it's also called. Right. Oh, this that could tower. actually go there. Yeah, exactly. That's the that's the one. That's the rat tower. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I've no I've never been there, unfortunately. But that's like the the one. <laughs> but uh where the bishop got eaten by rats. Uh, poor bishop. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's cool. You're probably not too far away from this. Uh it's I think it's quite a quite a distance probably if if, if it's in the Rhine. Oh, you're closer than I am. <laughs> well yeah. <laughs> yeah. This would be like a good couple of days trip. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, What's right. It? I mean in in in, in th this is one of the one of the things in, in Europe. Uh we say, Oh, that's so far away. And it's like a thousand kilometers. And when when you go to the US, it's like, oh yeah, um, it's in the next state. And that's also a thousand kilometers or something. <laughs> or pretty far at least. Uh, yeah, I've heard in certain parts of uh, Europe, it's actually quicker to go by train than plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, it's like, that's crazy. So you mean it's actually faster to go by a train than to go by a plane? <laughs> like, yeah, because you don't have to, I guess, wait in line and, you know, do all that with the train. Exactly. Yeah. You yeah. save saving enough time. I mean, that's pretty cool. Yeah. All right, let's see. We've covered, I think we've covered all the stuff. Obviously, you would. You like the real time. Was, was Did you ever think you might do a turn-based thing or was this, like, going to be real time from the... This was a uh, real time, all, all, always. Um, I actually, um, you know, as far as dungeon crawling uh, goes, there there are quite a few um, games that are uh, in uh, that are turn based, even. 
Yeah. I mean, Legend of Grimrock is basically a, a, a real-time game, uh, but it's tile-based. Uh, and most games, most modern dungeon crawlers that are like um, Legend of Grimrock are like that as well. I think there's one, one uh, turn-based dungeon crawler called Fall of the Dungeon Guardian. Yeah, play that. Uh, Yeah, I think I think that 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 one's turn based, but I think all the other ones are real time. But I wanted this. Um, I wanted basically the dynamic of of Arx Fatalis and and Kingsfield and Ultima Underworld, basically. So it was always real time. I think you nailed it. I mean, you don't want. I always say we want a variety. We don't want just one thing. Yeah. We want to have a, some fun with a turn based game, like Rimrock. For the uh. monomyth, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a different itch. Okay, all right. all right, so that's all the questions I see here. Well, actually, you, mm -hmm. you started talking about maybe what you might do after this. Are you thinking like DLCs or a full sequel or a completely different game? Um, I've, I'm undecided at the moment. Uh, but I'm 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 thinking about a couple of things. Uh, maybe maybe uh, a, a completely different project. Uh, because one of the nice things about uh, this um, this code base I made, uh, I mentioned it shortly in the beginning, is that it's uh, generic enough to use it in a completely different game, basically. So I could. Theoretically, uh, make uh, a, a sci-fi open-world RPG with the same code base or a relatively uh, similar code base. Uh, so I can pick and choose basically whatever whatever setting I want, and and maybe make a project like like that. So I'm 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 undecided at the moment. I've been. Thinking about a couple of things, I've been thinking about uh, an open world RPG. I've been thinking about a sequel for Monomyth. I've been thinking about, of course, also DLCs of Monomyth, for Monomyth. Um, I've been thinking about that that sci-fi RPG, of course, as well. I've only been thinking about it yesterday. <laughs> I've been thinking about a couple of things. And a sci uh, kind of sci-fi world, would you want to do? That's that's a that's a good question because because I was thinking, um, one thing with with sci-fi or with sci-fi worlds is that a lot of them are like uh, basically fantasy with 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 spaceships, mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes, and uh, what I I thought about was like um, something that that. Goes into a couple uh, scientific ideas or scientific technological advancements, and then explore those ideas uh, and the, the the social consequences, basically, of those in in like a, an an open world RPG type of game. Uh, so, but but generally speaking, I would want I personally would want, of course. Uh, 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 a sci-fi game with with aliens, of course, <laughs> which speaks exactly against what I just said, right? Because that makes it more like a fantasy game again. Uh, but but I I think that's rather entertaining always. Uh, so um, I'm a little I'm a little biased or influenced right now because I've been watching um, Farscape over the last few days. <laughs> A bit of it, and of course, also some 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 uh, some old uh, Star Trek episodes and stuff like that. So something that that goes into that direction would be interesting, but more in like a in like a, um, like a, a a Deep Space Nine type of uh, setting. So there's one place that's not. Um, not not so much uh, stuff about space travel, but like one place where all the different alien races come together for I don't know diplomacy or whatever, and uh, in this society you have like uh, these scientific advancements, and you, the game is exploring whatever social consequences those have on 
the specific uh, the specific uh, races on the specific um, inhabitants of that planet or of that station or whatever um, setting it would be in the end. Uh, and I can think of a couple a couple of interesting interesting themes there, uh, which would be fun to explore, especially the ones that you know that are not often explored in other in other sci-fi settings. Strangely enough, uh, one thing I've been thinking about is. Um, I mean, you know, you know what what the, the the replicator is, right? From from Star Trek, and it's oftentimes, you know, you think about it, and it's a bit of a plot hole machine, and uh, it's like, uh, but but what would society maybe look like if that actually worked, and what are the consequences of something like that? And and then of course, and then of course. What are the consequences within the game world and with the game design if something like that worked? So uh, do you have like your own little recycler where you put in uh, resources and can basically build anything? I mean that's a that's a common that's a common theme in a lot of in a lot of uh, sci-fi games. I think there's something like that even in the latest System Shock and then Prey. I think I think there's like this recycling thing, and uh, a couple other ideas like that, of course. And, uh, this is this is something else I could think of. Maybe. Even in the Star Trek shows, I was thinking, well, why do people care about gold or latinum? Or yeah. <laughs> yeah, we could just keep replicating it. And, I mean, right, 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 right. I always think too, who would ever leave the holodeck? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whatever you want in there, why are you leaving? I mean, I'd be like, done, <laughs> go away. <Yeah. laughs> this is my holodeck uh, program. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Yeah, yeah. So a couple. I mean, this these are just a couple of uh, of ideas I've been I've been throwing around in the few day, uh, in the last few days, just in the last few days, and I've I've also uh, another setting in mind as a fantasy setting. Which I could also do, um, but I'm, as I said, uh, undecided. I'm right now. I'm I'm biased. I'm influenced by watching watching Farscape and watching sci-fi shows, <laughs> old sci-fi shows. Uh, and uh, fire. Do they ever have a Firefly game? Um, that would have been a good game. Yeah, hey, somebody must have made some kind of game about it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's, a, there's a tabletop I mean, mm -hmm. yeah i was actually also surprised there's only like uh a single like one stargate game i was really surprised about that that's an awesome show that was a very popular show and there is there is there are virtually no no games uh in 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 the star stargate universe then like there was um you know there's not, uh, an a lot MMO of, not a lot of ancient egyptian type role-playing games yes like that would be a fun setting i mean they, they it crops up here and there but yeah in the strategy in the strategy uh genre you have it uh you had like pharaoh mm -hmm. um recently there was this Total War Pharaoh, and then there was the Pharaoh game from way back in the day that was like the 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 Caesar games. Yeah. It's like a city building game. But yeah, actually, um, there aren't that many that many ancient Egyptian games, and even fewer with uh, Stargate <laughs> involved. Yeah, Stargate. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jason Momoa shows up in the the spinoff, I think. Uh, yeah, in Atlantis, I think it was. Yeah, not sure. I even like the movie. That's yeah, the movie is 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 pretty um, pretty fun actually. Yeah, yeah it's been it's, uh, it's been forever. It's weird. There should be lots of games. Yeah, I only. I... Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I only I, I I'm I mean I only really quickly looked it up and I I only found like one 
uh, tactical Stargate game. And I know that there was an MMORPG that was cancelled during development, uh, but I don't think I've found anything else. And I'm actually surprised myself. Um, so maybe, maybe I'm, maybe I'm, 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 I'm talking nonsense. Right, Babylon Five. <laughs> As well. I mean, so they were i guess they were going to make a game and it didn't get done oh, okay 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 yeah yeah oh, I, I mean that that that's basically that's basically the setting um that i was more or less talking about like this 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 uh station where all the races come together and uh and have like uh their political intrigue and whatnot right so uh that would be that would be fun i think as a setting and and but thanks to the they got all this they apparently for this game they filmed a bunch of these original actors mm -hmm. so i wonder if that footage is around somewhere because that'd be pretty cool <laughs> yeah <laughs> right so, yeah you know what I'm saying? i got a little distracted there by the babylon <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. I yeah i'm no, I, I was I was just wondering what uh what uh maybe I've 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 missed some some Stargate game. I, I I'm so I'm also still so surprised because there's there's lots of 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 like old Star Trek games, uh, well, which see. you know makes makes sense. Uh, I, I I saw recently right that's the one that's the one I found. What is this? But this is like a. a, a tactics game or like a strategy real-time tactics game um Next. i i have never i've never played it or even seen much gameplay of it uh but beyond that i have not really found a single stargate game oh there's one for the super nintendo actually yeah uh, that's that's this uh i i remember that <laughs> But that one was like a side scroller, I believe. It was like a long time ago, and it was like based on the original movie and, and not yeah, the, it was like not the a series. Sega, a Sega one, right? It was either Sega or, or Super Nintendo. I think it might be. It might be. Might have been bought. Or might have been ported. I mean, they've got a, just about any game possible for the nintendo or <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 especially movie Not very good games usually but you know yeah. <laughs> i think they had like, the beethoven the dog has got a game <laughs> yeah right uh the the the, the dennis the menace 90s version game that one i <laughs> saw so out there oh yeah the other day as we were talking about western like wild west Mm -hmm. you know type I've... of playing games and we i mean there's a lot of like magical ones but we we're trying to think is there like other than red dead redemption you know is there like a straight yeah. wild west but not not fantasy yeah. just you know yeah no i've i've I, I couldn't say i mean there's call of juarez i think okay. that's played pretty straight it was like one or two games um and then there's red dead redemption and uh the 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 previous one called i think red dead revolver i'm not, I'm not sure anymore but apart from that um there's a lot of uh, there's been uh, um a bit of a revival of uh weird west games so these um as you said magic uh western games it was like Blood West, I think, and um, the one by uh, what was it called? Uh, by Rafael Colantonio, I think was his name. Uh, the, 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 the maker of or the lead designer of uh, Arx Fatalis. They made uh, a Weird West game, basically. <laughs> yeah, right. What's gone? What's gone with that? Yeah, this is this is like a a horror a horror a horror western game with like a 
Native American magic or something. <laughs> I'm not sure anymore. Evil West. And then, yeah, right. And then there was, what was it called? Oh my God. I should know this because I have it and I have played it. Um, maybe it's here somewhere. Oh, well, New Vegas is not. How is that a Western? It's, it's not a Western. It's, it's, yeah. my God, what was it called again? Um, wait. Some of these just don't, don't work, but yeah. I remember being a kid that was uh, wild, wild west. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I always thought this would be a fun, you know, I like this universe. It'd be fun to do a game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's um, it's called Weird West. It's just, I don't know why I didn't. I thought Weird, I thought Weird West was the, uh, was the tabletop game. There was like a, like a tabletop game that was called something like that. But Weird West is, is like also a, kind of a, a magical western game more or less with like special powers and, and voodoo magic i think <laughs> i'm not sure anymore but uh yeah this was also part of this this revival basically nothing wrong with it i just would like to have at least one that was i was playing it right now yeah. it seems like you have yeah, I... to work with Yeah, it'd probably work well to combine it with the survival genre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would I wouldn't be surprised if there was like a like a one of these open world crafting games that's set in a Western uh There probably is like a hundred mm, of them. People are gonna be in the yeah, pro pro. <laughs> yeah. We didn't do any research, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah. What about I'm the developer of that game and you didn't even mention my <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Hey Michael, it's been a lot of fun talking to you. It was a lot of fun for me too. Yeah. So if anybody wants the game, it's right here it's on Steam. Yeah, I want to get to that part you're showing here with those blades. Not where were they? You know where those blades are swinging? Oh yeah, All right. This is uh, somewhere. That's area two, by the way. That's what I'm currently uh, restructuring. That's part of that too, and that's hopefully coming soon. Oh, that's still cool. this year. Well, that's how magic's supposed to work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's like the that's um the arcane dart spell. Yeah, I'm almost thinking I might want to restart and try to do an archer. <laughs> the only uh, I'm be able to find enough arrows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that. All right, this one, this one. Yeah, that looks cool. This is one of the one of the smaller uh, side dungeons. Yeah, that magic system looks pretty cool too. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've actually. I've actually added quite a few spells before before release. So those still have to be balanced out a bit. Mono myth. So we can get it here for nineteen ninety nine. Is it on GOG? It is on, on, on good old games as well, yes. So you can get it there. I I usually um Upload every patch uh, at the same time on 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 Gog as well. Yeah, do you? Do so you, you might not want to answer this. But do you get more sales on Steam or Gog? Oh, this is always Steam. The, the, the answer is but the answer is always Steam. Uh, I, I technically I don't know yet. Technically, I don't know yet. Uh, but it's simply because the platform is much, much, much bigger. Uh, so, like, how uh, much bigger are we talking about? Like twice or three times? Or oh no, this is like uh, significantly bigger. Uh, Steam is like the the, the number one platform, and 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 uh, well, I'm glad if people buy it on 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 uh, good old games, of course. Um, 
but uh most most people buy their games on on steam and uh i mean i can't say a percent can't give you a, a specific percentage how much revenue would come in from from gog as i said i don't know yet but for other games that i know it's around five percent of their revenue is actually coming from 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 gog five to ten percent <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, oh, yeah i yeah. thought it would be more i thought they were no, it's i knew they weren't like 50 50 but i didn't realize it yeah yeah it's i mean it also depends on the game of course but but I, from, from 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 games that i i i heard of it's it's like that i i i'm not sure how many many units i've i've sold there right now because um i i haven't uh, checked it yet there uh but i mean you can look at the at the at the reviews i think there was like 15 reviews or something and on steam it's like 261 right now so that gives you a rough comparison Do you, ever, do you ever look at these reviews? Uh, not right, <laughs> not yet. But I will <laughs> go Sean through Joe, them. Just, just, <laughs> I just I'll go many, through them. I think about. It. I was recording a little video with them, you know, and I, I, I was looking at their reviews, and they're like, "What are you doing? We you do, don't show the." <laughs> they were just kind of kidding around, but yeah, I mean, I get it. You know, people just post some ridiculous stuff in these reviews sometimes, and. Like yeah, like uh, they even play the game, you know. They're just saying wacky stuff. Just yeah, to... and then there's the, there's the exit, uh, the the exact opposite where people have played it a thousand six hundred hours and then they they rate it down. So yeah, yeah, I've seen that too. I love they get fixated on one little thing they didn't like about a game. Oh, I noticed that uh, a lot of, wouldn't apply here, but they'll get upset about the copy protection, you know, back when that was a thing mm -hmm. uh, or some character, just a minor thing that really didn't impact the game. It wasn't yeah. any, any stuff that wasn't even the developers, nothing to do with them, you know, and they just get trashed, you know, mm -hmm. review bombs and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I think your reviews look pretty good, though. I think people get it. Yeah, that's the thing, because you mentioned the games you're inspired by, like Arc, mm -hmm. Arc Vitalis, Underworld, Kingsfield. So people should have a pretty good idea mm -hmm. of yeah. the game, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the the expectations are expectations. going in the right direction. <laughs> I had a guy on not too long ago, and he, uh, it wasn't even him. Somebody, some reviewer started comparing his game to Disco Elysium. Uh -huh. Yeah. This yeah. game wasn't anything like that. It wasn't trying to be like that. Was it not wasn't inspired by that? Just you know, some silly reviewer just kind of saw something. Uh -huh. So they kept spreading this. This is going to be the next disco, you know. Yeah. Yeah, of course uh -huh. they didn't go too well. <laughs> yeah. I mean that's unfortunate. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. Well, Michael, thanks again. Uh -huh. Luck with the game. Thank you. We'll see what, what happens. Get through the yes. Yes, and off to the stars, I guess. After this, so. <laughs> yeah, we will see. We'll see which which way we'll go then. But yeah, have a good one. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me, and you too. <laughs>
So some people watch the show, they don't do nothing. <laughs> Other people, the cool people who watch the show, uh, they want to keep it going. They want to be part of the team, part of where the magic happens. So they go to that link in the show notes called Patreon and sign up for a buck a show. Maybe $2 a show, maybe even $5 a show if you're feeling particularly generous. Remember, you can also make a one-time donation or set up a subscription. You know, you're not locked into anything uh, with Patreon. It's pretty cool. Uh, but anyway, I really appreciate that, guys, uh, for keeping the show on the air. I'm sure Matt Bradley Shirky was just <laughs> the same. Uh, or if you like the video, subscribe to uh, the YouTube channel. Tell people about it. Uh, that last thing is really important. Uh, so if you can tell a friend or send a link to it, if you like this uh, interview, you know, let some friends know, that'll make a huge difference. Uh, but whatever you do, just know that I appreciate it. <laughs> I put the rat in gratitude, folks. Gratitudinous. Thank you. All right. What about that news from Matt Cave? All right, we got uh, some chunky news. <laughs> It'll take a little while to explain what's going on in some of these segments, but I'll try my best. Uh, okay, so first off, the U.S. Copyright Office recently rejected a request to let libraries and museums remotely lend old video games for study. So you got a lot of people like me, a lot of students going into game studies programs. Uh, they need to be able to play some of these older games. Maybe they're available on Steam or GOG, or maybe not. And a lot of the stuff that's important historically, uh, but you don't want to just study the greatest hits. <laughs> you know, you might need people to look at lesser known games that maybe have lost their commercial appeal, uh, but you'd still be nice as a student or a historian to be able to play those games, you know, just like you would an old book in a library. Well, apparently our friends at the Entertainment Software Association didn't think that was a great idea. And they managed to get this shut down. Uh, even though the evidence are that these uh, legacy games uh, are not making any money for anybody. Uh, okay, uh, let's see what else they've got here. And uh, yeah, apparently game preservationists will face, uh, will have to wait, I guess, for three years uh, before they'll be able to appeal this decision. So that sucks. <laughs> what can we say? You know, I realize it's a complicated topic and I'm, I'm not a lawyer much less a copyright uh, lawyer, but, you know, it sure seems like they could find some way to do this that would make people at least reasonably happy. <laughs> some kind of compromise on this. Uh, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, because my feeling is they could ban it if they like, but it's just going to continue in the form of abandonware sites and places like that when it could be channeled through a legitimate, you know, library where there'd be some protection against viruses and, you know, cr uh, crooked uh, criminal type stuff. So I'm just kind of disappointed in this. I wish they had found a better way to work this out. All right, next item, Animation Studio Titmouse, which is my, probably my favorite kind of mouse. Uh, they're known for popular shows like Star Trek Lower Decks and Rick and Morty. Well, they're doing a new tabletop role-playing game called Drunkards, Druggies, and Delinquents. Yes, this game crowdfunding on Backer Kit combines humor, fantasy, and a party game vibe. Inspired by the founder's early experiences with D&D. &D. Uh, and this is what I really like about this. So the names of their classes. So they got a Barbarian. You could play a... <laughs> a Whiskey Wizard. <laughs> I don't know why that just... That's funny to me. Uh, and absurd enemies like the Hangover Mummy. Uh, designed to include non-drinkers as well. It offers alternative penalties for failed rolls. From jumping jacks to shots of apple cider vinegar. Yeah. So that game will hopefully be out by summer of 2025. And then finally, some good news. Uh, I've been talking here, of course, about Pathfinder, uh, the Dragon's Demand. And they have made their goal. Yes, the game is fully funded at this point. They even hit a couple of their stretch goals. So as expected, there was a nice little swell of attention there at the end. I think largely due to Shane Stacks. You know, Shane uh, put out a tweet, <laughs> and somehow, I don't know, maybe it's a coincidence, but whoo, you know, the thing just soared as soon as he sent that tweet out. So I don't know if that's absolutely a, <laughs> the explanation, but uh, anyway, I'm really glad they made this. Uh, they say it was a roller coaster journey. They've learned a lot about how to and how not to run a Kickstarter, but through the entire process, uh, blah, 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 they were committed to it. Uh, got over 8,000 backers. 
and able to rise over 610k worth of uh, Canadian money, CAD. So <laughs> I forget how that works out <laughs> uh, to American money, but I, you know, you know, kudos to them. Congrats! I'm really happy about this. Uh, I really enjoyed chatting with them, and hopefully, when they get this game made, be able to have them back on and talk about what it was like to develop that game. All right, uh, let's wrap it up with a quote. Uh, and since we were talking about monomyth, I thought I'd look into some Joseph Campbell quotes. Of course, he's got a ton, uh, but I thought this was a, a pretty good one. It goes something like this. Myths are public dreams. Dreams are private myths. So, ponder on that, and I'll see you guys next time.